Hello everybody and welcome to this, my video on the Agfa Photo, focus free Agfa Photo 31mm f9 reusable camera. So this is a 35mm point and shoot camera, which means it can use most, well it can, any 35mm film will fit into it. Uh, using a film slower than about 400 ISO, not necessarily a great idea. So it is really well designed for fast films. It has no light meter. It has a leaf shutter in it. It has a single shutter speed of 1 100th one of a second. The flash sinks at 1 100th one of a second, and you can see the flash over here on this side. And it is internally, uh, insofar as I can tell, exactly the same as myriad other cameras. On the external side, it looks exactly like this Kodak Ultra Alt F9 and also the Ilford Sprite 35 II. And inside, it shares the same construction as the double film show and the, um, the generic reusable cameras that are sold on AliExpress, the Vibe 501F, and uh, has a lot of similarity with the Kodak i60. Also, uh, I have seen cameras as old as the early 80s with the same internal construction as this, as this type of camera. So there's no new or revolutionary technology in here. Everything has been made and produced for a long time in a way that's pretty well known. The target market for this camera would be toy and fun camera enthusiasts. It's almost completely plastic. And that means that it's very lightweight and it comes with a lanyard, uh, so it's meant to be carried around. So th that's the first tip I'm going to give you, is take it with you because there's not much weight here to carry. This was made by the Corex Corporation in China, and this specific body style, the molding on the front of the camera right here, appears to have come into production sometime in, 19, uh, in 2020. Um, could not find exactly when they started making this specific design of camera. And insofar as I can tell, that this production style of this, the front of the camera looking like this is still ongoing. So as we do, if you grab your Agfa Photo reusable camera, we're gonna go over what all of the different things are, and then in just a few mo moments, we'll talk about how to use them. On the top of the camera, we have the film rewind knob and lever, and this is what you'll use to rewind your film when you're done taking a roll of film, flash ready light, this is your frame count window, shutter button. On the front of the camera, we have the Agfa Photo logo, the lens here with some information we've gone over that it's focus free, 31 millimeters and has an F9 aperture, viewfinder window, your flash, and then your flash off on button. Now it's probably very hard to see in the video, but if you look at your version of this lens, when you switch the flash off and on, the aperture changes inside the camera. So you have a slightly faster aperture when you use the flash than when you are not using the flash. On this side, we have your film back release. On this side, we have a little loop to connect the strap to. On the camera's bottom, we have the film rewind button, the battery chamber right here. What's that sticker say? There's an informational sticker that says Lupus Imaging and Media, the German company abbreviation GmbH, and then some address information in a website, and then the model of camera. So uh, that is different than the Sprite and the Kodak, which both lack those. Now to get into the camera, oh, on the camera's back, we have the viewfinder window that you'll look through to, to frame your image. We have the film advanced gear right here, and then this film door. To get into the camera, simply push down on this film release lock right here, and on this camera, it's tricky. Then you can get the door open. This is the film cassette chamber. Here is the shutter area, the, the, the imaging area. This is where the image will be projected onto the film. These, this sprocket right here arms the shutter as the film moves over it. 
and you can see the little shutter right in there. Film take up spool. And over here we have pressure plates or pressure ridges that are used to keep the film properly aligned as it moves through the camera. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a battery into this camera and the battery is only used to power the flash. So if you don't have a battery, you don't need a battery to take photos, only for the flash. So on the battery door, there's a plus sign over here and a minus sign over here, and that tells you how to insert your battery. Just like that, close the battery door. Now I'm gonna turn on the flash. It's likely to take about 30 seconds to charge up because the first time that the flash charges up on these cameras, it has to power up the capacitor from nothing. And so it just takes a moment. You can see there the light starting to glow, indicating that the capacitor is charging up and the flash is coming up to power. And we can test that. And yeah, flash works. Okay. When your battery dies, all you have to do is open up the battery door and remove the battery, prying it out from the plus terminal. Because the battery is not needed for anything but the flash, I'm just going to leave it out so we don't trigger the flash anymore. The next thing we're going to do is load the load film. So we're going to open up the film back again. We're going to grab our 35 millimeter roll of film, lift up the film release, the film rewind knob rather, drop in our cassette, close the, push the knob back in place, advance or pull out a leader. And now there are some little hooks on the bottom of the film take up spool here. We're going to advance the film. There we go. This has gone much better than the other two did. Okay, now you can see here that the, the sprocket holes on the film are lined up with that sprocket gear. And that sprocket gear, when it turns, is what arms the shutter. Now we're going to close the back of the camera. If you look at your film rewind window right there, you'll see that it says S. Take a photo, advance to the dot, take a photo, advance to the one, and now we're ready to take pictures. Now, one thing I want you to notice, to know that your film has been loaded correctly, we'll take all of the slack out of the film here. Okay, I'm gonna leave this up just so you can see what happens when I advance the film. Did not do a very good job of taking the slack out. Let's do that again. There you go. You can see that this turns as the film is advanced because there's a mechanical connection between the take-up spool and this knob because of the film connection. So if this is turning as you advance the film, you know it's been loaded correctly. You also know it's been loaded correctly because the shutter will not arm if the film's not moving through the camera. Okay, so you're gonna go through the day, your day, you're gonna take your photos. Film can be used a single time to record an image in a controlled manner with a proper exposure, shutter speed, aperture, and lighting, or in an uncontrolled manner where, where it will absorb all of the photons that reach it like this. So when you are actually out using your film, don't open the film back because all of the film that is outside of the cassette right now, if this were real life, all of the images that are taken on it or that could be taken will be erased. So you're not gonna be able to see the images on your film after you take them anyhow. But I want you to see what happens inside of your camera when you take a photo. Okay, so shutter is armed. I'm gonna take a photo. And now this is where the edge of the shutter is. I'm gonna advance the film. And you can see, this is where the other edge of the shutter is, that the film moves through the camera about the exact same amount as, uh, just a little bit further rather than the, the width of the shutter area. And as it does, it engages the sprocket and rearms the shutter. Okay, so what about what ha when you're done with your film, then you wanna rewind it. To rewind your film, you're going to pull out the lever right here and I'm gonna hold the cassette. You don't, obviously you don't want the back of your camera open when you do that, but I uh, need to, do, to replicate the back of the camera being closed. Hold down the film rewind button right there, and then simply re rewind the film, just like that. When, now, when the film is rewound, it's safe to open up your camera, lift up on the film rewind knob, and you can remove your 35 millimeter cassette. 
And when you actually rewind your film, you want to have the leader rewound all the way into the cassette because that will prevent you from accidentally reusing the film. Now you can either toss in your next roll of film, or if you're done shooting for the day, just close up your camera, make sure the shutter has been triggered, and you're done. So we've seen how to use the flash, which is just turn it on, wait for it to charge up, and take a photo. We've seen how to take a photo. We've seen how low... We've seen how film moves through the camera, but let's put all of these things together and take a photo with the camera. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is decide whether or not you wanna use the flash. On or off depends on your lighting. If you're indoors, you probably wanna use the flash. If you're outdoors, you really don't have to. Next thing you're gonna do is, if you are gonna use a flash, wait for this to light up red. You're gonna look through the viewfinder right here, sight up your scene so it's composed as you want, and then take a photo. Once you've taken the photo, just advance your film until it stops advancing, and then you're ready to take another photo. Same process. Okay, so that's super easy. What about double exposures? Well, you can't, because the movement of the film is what arms this camera's shutter. If the film doesn't move, the shutter can't arm, so it's double exposure proof. So to that end, Corix, if you are watching this video, there are two improvements that would make the future versions of this camera far, far more useful. A multiple exposure switch and bulb mode so that you, there would be a, a longer shutter speed, which would allow for more creative ability with this camera. So all that, let me give you some tips on how to get the most out of your Agfa Photo reusable camera. The first is going to be to use a fast film like a 400 and a 400 C41 color film is very tolerant of overexposure and a little bit of underexposure, depends on the exact film. But if you put a 400 ISO color film into this, you can use it in full sun and get fine images back. One advantage to using a 400 ISO film in this in full sun is that you'll get very thick negatives. And that means that these scratches, which are left on the back of the film, this part of the film right here, by those ridges on the back of the camera door. Every camera I've ever used that has that ridge pattern on it from the same camera manufacturer that makes this, those ridges leave scratches on the back of the negative and they're noticeable if it's a proper density or thin, much less so if the negatives are overexposed. So 400 ISO film works really well. These are really light, they're easy to carry, so do that. Carry them around, enjoy them, and use them to take photos. And um, on that, while you're carrying them around, be careful not to have them bump, swing around wildly and hit things. When I use the double film show, which is functionally the same as this in the back, uh, a couple of times it hit things like a tree stump or a sign and stuff like that, and the back popped open and erased a bunch of photos. So. Um, Definitely do carry them around, but just be mindful that you don't swing it into something. Some things not to do with your camera. Uh, whenever you're done shooting for the day, always trigger the shutter because that will take any tension off of the springs and help you preserve the, the, the shutter life. Don't let it get wet. There are a handful of metal components in here that could be damaged by water. Also, uh, when you're done, take the battery out of the bottom because if the battery explodes, you will lose the use of your flash. The rest of the camera will still work, but you won't have the flash to use. And so, though this is a fun camera, it's not a precision tool, you should still handle it with care and respect because as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.